We are now going to talk about their definition of an ellipse, and then we will derive the formula. Suppose that you have a piece of string. This is not the piece of string. But you tie down one end of the string there and another end of the string there. And it's hanging out here. Now, if you were to, say, put your pen here and pull outward, you might get that configuration with the string. Most importantly, you get that point. Let's do that in red. And then you relax the string and maybe you put your pen here and you pull up and maybe you get this point here and if you put your pin here and you pulled out, maybe you'll get this point here. And if you did this enough, you will sketch out the top half of an ellipse. Now you do the same underneath. You put the string there and you pull. You you pull from here out there and you know you get this point and you pull over here and you get that point and if you pull out this way you get that point and if you were to run the pin all the way around the top and then all the way around the bottom by pulling as far as you can get you would get something that looks like this. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit more carefully. I didn't mean to draw that point, but it's the origin. Now, the points where you tap down the end of the strings, they are called your focus points. And a, an ellipse it has two points that have a focus. Two focuses are called a foci. Now, when you draw the parabola, let's make a couple of assumptions. The first one we're going to say is that this point is negative C0. It's C units to the left of the center. And this one is C units to the right of the center. So whatever is worth, I think I had them too far from the center. But that doesn't matter. Now, let us say that whatever that distance is, it's B. Now, this point is on the ellipse. That is, the string is going to go like this. And what happens is we get two right triangles. Now, we know that that distance is C, and for the record, so is that distance. And after all, from the origin to C units away is C units. So, this is equal to, say, A, where B squared plus C squared is A squared. That is, that's how we define A, as B squared plus C squared. If I said A, I meant to say that's how we defined A squared. But let's look at what's going on for a moment. The string is to a unit long. So we're going to have this relationship between the A's and the B's and the length of the string is going to be 2A. Now again, how did this point get to be on this ellipse? 
how does that point get to be here? The answer is simple. The distance from this focus to that point plus the distance from this focus to that point is 2a. Okay, so let us calculate those two distances. This point is negative C0. It is one of the two foci. This point is C0. It's the other foci. X and Y axis. How does this, let me not put it right there. Doesn't look like an arbitrary point. Now, before I go on, I want to show one more thing. This is negative C0. This is C0. And the length of the string is 2a. So here's the string. Now, if I pull it all the way to the right, the P, and it ends up, say, there, you're going to have this length plus you're going to have this length. And that has to equal to 2a. Well, l let's call this point r0. It is on the x-axis. So, how long is this red point? Well, it's the right end minus the left end. It's r minus negative c, also known as r plus c. And then we add on the blue distance, which is right minus left. It's r minus c. It's r minus c. So when you add this up, you get, well, the, the c plus the minus c canceled out. You get 2r. Okay, but the length of the string is supposed to be 2a. Dividing by 2, we find out that r is a. That is, the rightmost point is going to be at a0. When you draw this parabola, where the highest point is b, it's actually going to go out to a. Okay, we just derived it. And, of course, it's going to go out on the other side to negative A. So now that we know those two points, let's see what we can say about the parabola. How does, for argument's sake, that point get to be on the parabola? Well, it's going to, this distance plus that distance must be 2A. Just so we know what we're talking about, I'll call them D1 and D2. Well, D1 is going to be X minus the X value. X minus the negative C means X plus C squared plus Y minus 0, which is Y squared. That's D1 plus D2. So I do X minus the X value. X minus C squared plus y minus 0, which is y squared. That's d2. And the sum is supposed to be twice a. And this is the formula we're going to use. I may need this space. Now, in fact, I'm going to need a lot more space. I'm going to copy this on top. This. Now, when you have the square root of one thing plus the square root of another thing equaling something nice like 2a, you don't want to square both sides the way it is. You want to separate the square roots. Separate means you don't want them both on the same side of the equal sign. So how about we bring this to the other side? So now we're going to have the square root of x plus c squared plus y squared is equal to 2a minus the square root part, x minus c squared plus y squared. Now we square both sides. When you square this side, 
you're just going to get what's underneath the square root sign. When you square the other side, you're going to get that squared plus this squared, which will just be the stuff underneath the square root sign, minus 2 times this, which is 4a, times that, which has a square root sign x minus c squared plus y squared. First thing I'll notice is I can take away y squared from both sides. They have to be on opposite sides of the triangle. Now, I want to isolate this. There's only one square root sign. Let's get it by itself. Let's get this square root by itself. Let's move everything to the left side. So you have x plus c squared right there. You bring this over as minus x minus c squared. You bring that over as minus 4a squared. And then you're going to just have this on the right side of the equation. Okay. Now, we have the difference of squares. Remember, whenever you have a squared minus b squared, you add the a and the b, the two things being squared, you subtract the a's and the b's. That's just what I have here. That's a and that's b. I add them, I get 2x. I multiply that by what I get when I subtract them, and I get 2c. Minus 4a squared is equal to negative 4a square root. x minus c squared. Plus y squared. Okay. Let's get rid of this and note that 2x times 2c is 4cx minus 4a squared equals negative 4a times the square root. I divide every term by 4. There's now no 4. So what do we have? We have cx minus a squared is equal to negative a times this square root. Now I am going to square both sides. This is a difference being squared. So I get the first term squared. I call that the first and that's the second. Plus the second term squared, which will be a to the four, minus two times the product of a squared and cx. And that equals to the right side squared. I squared the first factor. I squared the second factor, which is x minus c squared plus y squared after I squared it. Okay. Let's clean up the right side. And be careful not to make any simple mistakes. We have a squared times, when you square x minus c squared, you get x squared plus c squared minus 2cx. Don't forget to add on the y squared. In this line, we're going to distribute the a squared. So you get a squared x squared plus a squared c squared minus 2 a squared cx oops, plus a squared y squared. The first thing I notice is this exactly is on both sides. Minus. So they cancel out. So I have c squared plus a to the fourth is equal to a squared x squared plus a squared c squared, and let's not forget 
that plus a squared y squared. Okay. Now let's bring that x squared and the y squared to one side. Since there's only one y squared on the right side, uh, on there's only one y squared. It's on the right side of the equal sign, and it's positive a squared. Let's bring all the x squares and y squares to the right side. This is a squared x squared. I bring this over. It becomes negative cx squared. This is already here. So on the left side, I have a to the fourth minus a squared c squared. Okay, things are starting to come together. When I factor out the a squared on the right side, left side, I get a squared minus c squared. And this is equal to grouping, that should be c squared x squared. Okay, it was c squared x squared. Somehow the next line, I just wrote c x squared. Same thing for the next line. And I guess now I just put it in. So, how many x squares do I have? Well, I have a squared of them here, and I'm taking away c squared of them there. So, in total, I'll have a squared minus c squared x squared plus a squared y squared. And now it comes together. Remember that we had. That, this relationship. If I solve for b squared, it says that a squared minus c squared is b squared. Okay? Ooh, that's b squared. a squared, b squared. Oh, look at this. Another b squared. x squared plus a squared. y squared. Now, we got it. We divide each term by a squared b squared. a squared b squared. Because I wanted a 1. These b squared cancel out. You get x squared over a squared. These a squares cancel out. You do have plus. And now you get y squared over b squared. That is the equation of an ellipse that have the following property. It sent it at the origin. It goes from negative a to positive a and from b down to negative b. Doesn't look real good. Let's try to draw that a little bit better. I think I drew it fine. I just didn't have a good y-axis. Not sure why it jumped up just then, but that's fine. This is b, and that is negative b. And we had a relationship between a and b. And that was if this is a and this is b, then this was c. Or in our case, negative c. And likewise. Remember that this has to be a from the foci because a plus a is 2a. This is c0. Okay, and again, the equation is x squared divided by the longest that a can be plus y squared divided by the highest value that y can be equals 1. That is the equation of an ellipse. Now, we've got the e and and the foci are along the x-axis. Of course, there's no reason why I can't put the foci across, or sorry, on the y-axis and get something that looks like that. I would just say switch x and y's 
and everything will work out the same. This completes the proof of the ellipse on how to derive the equation of an ellipse.